Bill Bryant, uh, leads the Science and Technology Directorate at the Department of Homeland Security, and now will make a presentation on their recent study. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thank you, Mr. President, for this opportunity to do this today. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Bill Bryan, and I lead the Science and Technology Directorate at the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Over the last several months, we've intensified the department's R&D efforts to identify and deliver information that informs our response to COVID-19. ST is working to identify, develop, deploy, and deploy the tools and information to support our response to this crisis. As part of our efforts, we're leveraging the unique capabilities of ST's National Biodefense Analysis and Countermeasure Center to study the biology of the COVID-19 virus. This center is a high biocontainment laboratory located in Frederick, Maryland. Uh, it was established in the early 2000s in response to the Amerith Amerithrax attacks, uh, and where we study, characterize, analyze, and develop countermeasures for biological threats to the homeland. We work closely with the CDC, FDA, HHS, and also our Department of Defense colleagues and many others. Yesterday, I shared the emerging results of our work that we're doing now with the Coronavirus Task Force. And today, I would like to share certain trends that we believe are important. If I may have the first slide, please. And while that's coming up, our most striking observation to date is the powerful effect that solar light appears to have on killing the virus, both surfaces and in the air. We've seen a similar effect with both temperature and humidity as well, where increasing the temperature and humidity or both is generally less favorable to the virus. So let me illustrate with this first slide. If you look to the right, you'll see that term half-life with a bunch of timestamps on there. Uh, first, let me tell you what a half-life is. We don't measure the virus as far as how long will it live on a surface. We have to measure the decay of the virus in terms of its half-life because we, we, we don't know certain elements. We don't know how much a person expectorates when he, when he spits, right, when he sneezes, whatever the case may be. We don't know how much a virus is in there. So it's, that, that has a, a, long, a bearing on how long the virus is going to be alive and active. So we measure it in half-life, because half-life doesn't change. So if you look at an 18-hour half-life, what you're basically saying is that every 18 hours, the virus, the life of the virus is cut in half. So if you start with 1,000 particles of the virus, in 18 hours, you're down to 500. In 18 hours after that, you're down to 250, and so on and so forth. That's important, as I explain the rest of the chart. If you look at the first three lines, when you see the word surface, we're talking about non-porous surfaces, door handles, stainless steel. And if you look at the, as the temperature increases and as the humidity increases with no sun involved, you can see how drastically the half-life goes down on that virus. So the, the virus is dying at a much more rapid pace just from exposure to higher temperatures and just from exposure to humidity. If you look at the fourth line, uh, you inject summer, the sunlight into that, you inject UV rays into that, the same effects on line two at 70 to 75 degrees with 80% humidity on the surface and look at line four, but now you inject the sun, the half-life goes from six hours to two minutes. That's how much of an impact the UV rays has on the virus. The last two lines are aerosols. What does it do in the air? We have a very unique capability. I was discussing this with the president prior to coming out. He wanted me to convey it to you on how we do this. I believe we're the only lab in the country that has this capability. But if you can imagine a Home Depot bucket, a five-gallon Home Depot bucket, uh, we're able to take a particle, and this was de uh, developed and designed by our folks at the end back. We're able to take a particle of the virus and suspend it in the air inside of this drum and, and, and hit it with various temperatures, various humidity levels, multiple different kinds of environmental conditions to include uh, sunlight, and we're able to measure the decay of that virus while it's suspended in the air. This is how we do our aerosol testing. We work with John Hopkins Applied Physics Lab, and we actually developed a larger drum to do actually more testing, and it's four times the size of that. So this is the capability that we bring to this effort. So in summary, within the conditions we've tested to date, the virus in droplets of saliva survives best in indoors and dry conditions. The virus does not survive as well in droplets of saliva, and that's important because a lot of testing being done is not necessarily being done, number one, with the COVID-19 virus, and number two, in saliva or respiratory fluids. And thirdly, the virus dies the quickest in the presence of direct sunlight under these conditions. And when you, when you look at that chart, look at the aerosol as you breathe it, you put it in a room, 70 to 75 degrees, 20 percent humidity, low humidity, uh, it lasts, the half-life is about an hour, but you get outside and it cuts down to a minute and a half. Very significant difference uh, when, it, when it gets hit with UV rays. 
Mr. President, while there are many unknown links uh, in the COVID-19 transmission chain, we believe these trends can support practical decision making to lower the risks associated with the virus. If I could have my next slide, and when that while that comes up, you'll see a number of some practical applications. For example, increasing the temperature and humidity of potentially contaminated indoor spaces appears to reduce the stability of the virus. And extra care may be warranted for dry environments that do not have exposure to solar light. We're also testing disinfectants readily available. We've tested bleach. We've tested isopropyl alcohol on the virus, specifically in saliva or in respiratory fluids. And, and I can tell you that bleach will kill the virus in five minutes. Isopropyl alcohol will kill the virus in 30 seconds. And that's with no manipulation, no rubbing, just spraying it on and leaving it go. You rub it and it goes away even faster. We're also looking at other uh, disinfectants, specifically looking at the COVID-19 virus in saliva. This is not the end of our work as we continue to characterize this virus and integrate our findings into practical applications to mitigate exposure and transmission. I would like to thank the president, thank the vice president for their ongoing support and leadership to the department and for their work in addressing this pandemic. I would also like to thank the scientists, not only in S&T and the NBAC, but to the larger scientific and R&D community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I ask Mr. Bryan a question? Yes, sure. Thank you. When you started your presentation, you described this as an emerging result. Does this mean your study is conclusive? Is there more work to do? We're continuing with that. For example, on the aerosol side, you notice the figures were 20% humidity. We're looking at higher humidity levels. We would expect that we even have a greater impact on the virus. We're looking at other types of disinfectants. Uh, and, and so we're, this is a, a, we're, as a scientific community, we're continuing to study the virus to understand its characteristics. Mr. Bryan, um, can you explain why some hot spots we've seen in the U.S. are hot and humid, like New Orleans, for example? Let me explain, if, if you look at the coronavirus as a chain with many links, what we've done through our study is we've identified some of the weak links in that chain that the virus, the transmission of the virus depends upon. We identified that heat and humidity is a weakness in that chain. We've identified that sunlight, solar light, UV rays is a weakness in that chain. That doesn't take away the other activities, the guidance from the White House, the guidance from the CDC and others on the actions and steps that people need to take to protect themselves. This is just another, another tool in our tool belt, right? another, another weapon in the fight uh, that we can add to it. And in the summer, we know that summer-like conditions are going to create an environment where the transmission can be decreased. And that's an opportunity for us to get ahead. But uh, Brian, uh, is, is, uh, the, the, the president uh, mentioned the idea of, of cleaner the bleach and isopropyl alcohol you mentioned. Uh, there's no scenario that that could be injected into a person, is there? I mean, no, I'm, I'm, I'm here to talk about the findings that we had in the study. We don't do that within that lab at our lab. So, okay. so, so, so how do you are we We're talking about almost a cleaning sterilization of an area. Right. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't work, but it certainly has a big effect if it's on a stationary object. Okay. So how do you Are we simplifying too much by saying that it'd be better with the warmer weather and the sun coming out more and more that people would be outside than staying inside their home confined to the four walls of their house? It, it would be irresponsible for us to say that we feel that the summer is just going to totally kill the virus and that if it's a free-for-all and that people ignore those guides, that is not the case. Uh, we, we have an opportunity, though, to get ahead with what we know now and factor that into the decision makings for what opens and what doesn't. But so, so are you saying on surfaces, the heat, the hot summer, uh, and whatever other conditions, humidity and lack of humidity, yes. uh, that that would have an impact? So that on surfaces where it can be picked up, it will die fairly quickly in the I, summer, whereas in the winter it wouldn't die so quickly. Yes, Mr. President. When it's exposed to UV rays, take a playground equipment, for example. The UV rays hitting a piece of playground equipment will kill the virus when it hits that when it hits on the playground equipment, but underneath where the sun does not get, if someone touched that and had it on their hands, it could still be there, right? It, it has to be in direct uh, light of the UV rays. With the sun, with, if it's on somebody's hands, right? And yes. they haven't touched their face and all of the things. Uh, and it's exposed open. to the sun. It'll I know, but if, if they're outside, right, and their hands are exposed to the sun, will that kill it as though it were on a piece of metal or something else? Not, I, I don't want to say it will at the same rate, because it's a non-core service, but we do know, what we do know is that we looked at the worst case scenario and the virus lives longer on non-porous surfaces. So porous surfaces, it doesn't live quite as long. So in theory, what you said is correct. 
This is sort of summer in Yonge Forest, right? Yes, yes, sir. Right? yes Mr. President. Mr. Ryan, how is the governor's health center? Mr. Ryan, to do Mr. Ryan. Wait, 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 wait. Mr. Ryan, how should governors who are opening their states, working on that, incorporate the findings of the study into those guidelines? I would leave that up to the governors. This is a th this is a decision. This factors into their decision process. As I mentioned, with knowing this knowledge and having this knowledge, uh, as we continue to study and further know what the virus does and how it reacts, it could impact the way a governor will look at what he opens in a state, how he opens it, in what environments uh, these things are opened up. But I leave that up to the governors to make that decision. How it might suggest, yeah. um, obviously, at the moment, the advice is stay at home. By the summer, could we be flipping that and saying you'd be much better off being outside with UV rays, all the humidity that uh, Washington brings in August? I, I would not go contrary to the guidance that have been issued right now. I think, though, to tell you that if, if, uh, if, if I'm having an event with my family, I'm doing it in the driveway or in the backyard, not inside the house with my children. In fact, I'm thinking about moving outside to the <laughs> Rose Garden. <laughs> no, it's a very interesting question, actually. Okay. Please, uh, how much more research, how much more time would it take to have conclusive results that, that could be used here? You said these were emerging results. We, we first were able to receive the virus back in February is when we started testing. And uh, it is a science-based approach. Science is a process. The doctor can attest to that. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily line up with goals and targets and other things. It is what it is. Uh, but we are now starting to get results. And, and we're every week or two weeks, we're starting to find out something new and something different. Uh, and in talking to the, to, to the task force and the vice president, uh, he's already asked us to come to him every time we come up with some new discoveries that, that, we, could be, that we could share to the public. Bill? Yeah, sir, have you compared notes with your counterparts in other foreign governments or in private industry who might have been studying the same thing and do their findings show the same result that you found here? We, have, we, we do have a very good partnership with uh, a lot of our allies. We work closely with them on this particular topic. Uh, we actually authored a document called the Master Questions List. If you go to DHS s and website, we've already had about 17,000 hits on this document. It actually outlines what all the countries in the world are doing to fill the certain gaps of knowledge that don't exist within the virus and what we do know. And that is really what targets and drives the science community to say, oh, wait, what don't we know now so we don't duplicate what other people have done? So we've championed that document. It's well referenced, and I would encourage you to look at that. From 赶紧上网填，打电话也行。请上二零二零 census.gov 完成普查。